for alternet.org. Sarah, it's nice to see you today, and I think a lot of women that are going to be watching this interview, their ears are going to perk up when they hear about these different states that uh, are being classified as the worst. So based on your re reporting, it seems like the restrictiveness of the Midwest is really what's raising the most red flags. Yes, there are several states. Uh, many of them are in the Midwest and the South. Um, some are surprisingly not as red as you would think, like Virginia, where are, there are these laws called targeted regulations of abortion providers, which, if enacted, could close all 22 of the state's abortion clinics, which would mean not even any first trimester medical abortions for women in Virginia, which is truly going back to pre-Roe situation. When you did the research for this report, tell me what was the criteria that you were going by? Well, there was a, um, a collection of data based on the Guttmacher Institute, which ranked states based on the different restrictions in place. So the worst states were the ones that not only had few abortion providers, but also had these targeted regulation laws, these parental notification laws. So there are some, such as you said, such as Indiana, which had every single kind of abortion restriction on the book. So not only do young women have to get permission from their parents, but there are no late-term abortions, and there are very few clinics available. So when you, when, you, when you have all these different restrictions stacked together, you have a situation where Roe is the law of the land in name only. When you did the research, what was the most eye-opening that you came away with? Some of the most shocking ones were, were, the, were these patronizing um, measures on the books. For instance, in South Dakota, what you have is, it hasn't been enacted yet, but it was passed by the legislature and signed by the governor, which requires women not only to wait 72 hours before obtaining an abortion, but also to visit an anti-choice crisis pregnancy center and talk to a counselor there. Now, many of these are, as we know, Christian-run um, and have an agenda. So this is particularly shocking and patronizing the law. To, to the fact that it's, it's now being fought in the courts, but the fact that it actually made it past the legislative process was quite shocking.